Hello guys and welcome to part 2 of this cute little character render that we're doing in Blender. Once again this is not rigged or anything like that, it's just a still render of this kind of like bug, have vegetable kind of thing. And what you see here is my original one, but in this two part tutorial series, this being part 2, I'm going to take you through the whole process, how I made it, and how you can make it and give you some of my um, design input and stuff like that. So without wasting more time, uh, let's get into this part 2. Okay, so now that we're in part two, we're gonna get started by making our background. Now in part one, we added this quick plane in here, we just scale it up. But what we're gonna to do to make kind of like a background part of it, we're just gonna go into edit mode. And let's just select the two back verts. And we're gonna go G, Y, and move them back. Okay, and then we're gonna go E to extrude, and we're gonna go Z. Let's bring it up about this much. And then just go G, Y, and move that back. All right. Now if you want to really smooth things out, just select these two verts here and then go Control B or Command B and you can bevel it. Roll your middle mouse button and you can create um, some cuts in between. So just something nice and smoothed out like that. Tab back into Edit Object Mode. And now if you go into our camera, you can go S, X to scale that plane if it's um, too narrow. So just like that. And then go to Object and just shade smooth, so it's nice and smooth. So there we have a nice simple background. Now because we're going to be working in cycles, now you can work in Eevee, but if you're going to be working in cycles, which I'm going to do, so I'm going to set this to the cycles engine, um, what you want to do is you want to go control B or command B and then click and drag over the camera. So control B and then click and drag over the camera view and that's going to make an orange selection, it's kind of like this little orange outline here and that means it's just restrained the rendering to the camera um, view. So when we're looking at the camera view, we don't see the rendering everywhere else. And that kind of just makes our viewport performance a little bit more efficient and makes things easier. So if you do have a GPU or CUDA or whatever, just enable that and um, then we're ready to go. So let's quickly hit Z and we go rendered. We can see it's rendering, but we're not seeing anything because we need some lights. So let's go Shift A, let's go to our light options and let's add in an area light. I'm going to go G, Z, move this area light up in the scene. Okay, at the moment it's not too strong. So let's go over to our light settings and let's make it something like 80. So I'm going to make it 80. And let's increase the scale by hitting S and scaling it. And let's go Z and let's go render it now. And let's see that. Okay, so that looks a lot better. So I'm going to go into my camera view. I'm going to move this over to the side and I'm going to go R just to rotate it. You can increase the strength. You can increase the size, whatever you need to do to get it right. Just keep in mind, the bigger you make the size of the light, the softer and more um, diffuse that lighting becomes. Uh, so it really depends on what you're after. For me, um, I like a little bit of sharpness. I'm not going to go too, too big, but I don't want to go too small to where we kind of have that thing going on. Okay, so now you can go Shift D. You can duplicate this light as many times as you want. This is completely up to you. Um, I'm not really going to go through all of the principles of lighting because there's so many techniques and ideas out there. But really what it comes down to is just experimenting, seeing what you like. In this case, I've got two main lights here. I've got this one here and I've got this one here. And that's just helping me um, at least have lighting from both sides like this. Right? So this is kind of like two points of lighting. You can duplicate it and bring one coming from the back as well if you want. Just go into your rendered view and your camera, see what it looks like. So you can see here, this looks pretty cool. But what I like to do is I also like to go Shift A and under my light settings, I like to add in a point light. And these point lights are really handy. So you can move them up and under your light settings, you can scale up the radius and then increase the strength. So let's make it 80 as well. And now if we hit Z and we go render, we can see if I move that away, see how it kind of that um, edge there looks kind of um, not that well defined, but when we put that light back there, it kind of creates this rim light, which really helps your subject pop from the background. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go Shift D and I'm just gonna duplicate this and just move them all along the back of the subject here. So now, if we hit Z, we're going to render it. You can see it kind of really just pops out from the background. Now, in some areas, it's maybe a little bit too intense. So I'll move them just a little bit more back. Just play around with it but shouldn't be blown out every, anywhere. So just 
yeah, something like that really makes the subject pop from the background. Now this light here, I might just intensify this area light a bit and just bring it a little bit more forward and rotate it in just so the front of the face here of our subject is a little bit more lit and not too dark. Okay, so that looks pretty cool. So now we have some nice lighting going on here. So now let's get into our materials. We'll get to the particles in a bit, but let's just start with our materials. So we're gonna go into our shading workspace. And these materials are super simple. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna select the character I'm gonna hit Z, I'm gonna go render it. So this is our skin material that we applied in part one of this tutorial, we added materials. So all we're gonna do is with our principal shader here, we're just gonna come and make it a nice lime green. And we're gonna bring that roughness down. Or not too much, maybe just like that. So now you can see we have that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the eyes and we're gonna come to the base color here and we're gonna make those black, but the, we're gonna bring the roughness down quite a bit so they're nice and glossy. Okay, we're now gonna select the tongue. We created the tongue material earlier. Just make it kind of like a reddish pink. Make it a little bit more reflective by bringing the roughness down. And then select the character again and just go over here. And instead of selecting the skin this time, let's select that mouth material that we created in part one. And we're gonna make this almost like the tongue, but we're gonna make it a little bit more redder, a little bit darker, like that. So now if we hit Z and we go rendered, uh, we can see we have that mouth. So mess around with it as much as you want. I think the tongue might be just a little bit too saturated for my liking, so I'm gonna desaturate it just a little bit. And there you can have it, we have the actual materials. Now, with my original, I'll quickly show you here, you can see the node setup. I did the exact same thing, but all I did is I got a Veroni texture and I plugged it into a color ramp, and then I just used it as a mix on a factor, and I added two different kinds of green, so it kind of created this splotchy effect on my character, which just gave it a little bit more um, a variation. But that's something that's optional, but it's super easy to do if you guys wanna go that route with your characters, okay? So let's just go back to the one we're doing now. So pretty much it's looking good. Let's just grab our background, we'll just plane, give that a new material, and all I did for that, I just made it kind of like an orange kind of color like that. I just felt it really complemented the subject here, and I brought the roughness down just a bit. Okay, so now we're gonna get to the fun part, which is we're gonna select the subject here, and we're gonna go to our particle settings, and we're gonna click plus, and we're gonna make it hair. And at the moment, it's only gonna add it to half of our subject here because we have this modifier stack, right? So we need to tell it how to use that. So let's go back over here to our particles, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna come here to the emission, and under the emission, you're gonna see here something called source. Click under here, under emit from faces, you're gonna make it use modifier stack. So now it's using, um, taking into account this modifier stack here. All right, so if you ever run into that issue, that's what you can do. Also just enable advanced here again under the particles. And let's just come here to the length of the hair and let's just bring that way down. So something really short like that. And let's go over to our viewport display. Actually, let's go to our children first and let's make it interpolated. So for each one of those main parent particles that was applied, it's gonna be giving it some children particles, which are kind of like um, generated around that um, parent particle. In this case, you can see the display amount is 10. So you can see up here, we have 1,000 um, parent particles, and each one of those 1,000 have 10 that are being displayed in our viewport. So that's the display amount here under the children. But when it actually renders, that amount will be 100. Now you can adjust this. So for example, we made it 30 on here. You can see it's a lot denser, but it's still not as dense as the actual render amount. Now there are several ways you can go about doing this. I prefer to actually come here to the number under the emission, the parent particles. And for something like this, I prefer to set it lower to maybe something like um, 580 and then setting the display amount to something like 30 or 40 it really depends on um, the, um, the performance of your computer. You don't wanna put the display amount too high, but when it comes to the render, you can leave that at 100 or even 120 if you want. So for every parent particle of this 150 um, or 580 parent particles, it'll be generating 100 child particles in the final render. Now one issue we're seeing here, we're actually having the particles applied in the inside of the mouth. So what we're gonna simply do is go to Object Data Properties, 
go to our vertex groups and let's just go into edit mode here and let's just create a vertex group. We're going to select everything by hitting A and then we're just going to go assign. So it's now being assigned to that group. But we don't want the inside of the mouth assigned. So let's just select all of that geometry inside the mouth. Okay, so the inside mouth geometry. So anything we don't want the hairs to be growing and then select that group, that vertex group, and then go remove. So now, if we now um, deselect everything and we click on that group and we go select, you should only see the faces that are active or the outside ones where we want the hair particles to be placed. So let's tab back out. Now let's just simply go to our particles. So we're just gonna come down here to vertex groups because we just created a vertex group. And then you're gonna get an option here called density. So that's our distribution. And we're gonna just select that group. By the way, you could name that group whatever you want. I just left it as groups. But now it's just telling it wherever we have those um, weights applied to our verts, it's gonna be um, applying the particles around there, but where we don't have the weights applied, it's not gonna be applying the particles. So that just gives us a way of controlling this. There are other ways you can do it, but that's kind of like the main quick and dirty way to do it. So now you can see we don't have any particles inside of the mouth there, which is really cool. Um, you can do the same thing with the eyes if you wanna get rid of some of the hair around the eyes, but I'm not too bothered with that. So if we now hit Z and we go render it, we can see what this hair looks like on our character. Now, one of the issues here it's just all too straight, so it looks too uniform. It looks like kind of fake grass. So what we're gonna do is under our particles here, we can go to our physics, and we can come here to the forces. Let's increase that Brownian amount just a tiny little bit. And we're also gonna come under our children's, um, particle, our children's settings here. We're gonna come to the roughness, and we're gonna make it ununiform, so just a little bit like that. And we're also gonna make this the size of it a little bit more random as well. And you can mess around with some of these things here. You can also come to clumping and slightly give it a little bit of clumping, but also make sure to give the shape a little bit of variation, but not too much. So experiment with it, see what you like. But what we need to do as well is we need to go over to our strand steps under the viewport display and bump that up. But we also wanna go to our render and we want to make sure we enable B spline under the path and let's increase the steps here as well do something like five now if we hit Z and we go rendered we should see something like this I guess now that's filling in a lot better because it's distributed a little bit more randomly um, but by all means mess around with some of those um, clump clumping settings and the shape and some of the uniform settings here just to give it a little bit of roughness until you get something that you like so you can mess around with those random settings and the uniformity and all that sort of stuff till you get something that you like. Try out some different renders, but just a few slight adjustments like that um, goes quite a long way. So now what we can do, um, I might just go up to the hair length and just bring it down just a little bit more. Okay, something like that. So now we're just gonna save. And now let's just quickly go render and give this a test render. And there we have it, the render is done now. And you can see here, um, definitely I could do some more work with the fur here in the settings, but sometimes just doing little adjustments will make quite a difference. So mess around with it as much as you want. Also with placing the legs, you know, I could have taken a little bit more time with that, but just for the tutorial's sake, I just kept it really basic. But you can kind of see here the idea of this character. Something is really simple to model, really simple to place, basic materials, and really the sky's the limit. You could really go about many different ways making this look really awesome. So I'm gonna quickly just, once again, just show you my original, which I did the exact same thing. Just very little um, variations and adjustments that I made while I did it. But you can see here, this is my original. And um, you can see here, I just went and added teeth as well. These teeths are nothing more than just cubes that I gave a subdivision surface modifier for to and just extrude it and stretch them out a little bit and just place them in the mouth. So really, really basic stuff. I mean, there's nothing here that you cannot do as a beginner. Like all of the steps I've showed you in part one and part two will pretty much heal you this result. Um, really, the nicer you wanna get it, it's just about spending more time um, adjusting things, spending more time um, placing things, messing around with your lighting, but really um, using the techniques I've showed you now, you can make this um, really cool looking render. So I hope you guys enjoyed this 
tutorial, so this has been part two. If you haven't already seen part one, check it out on my channel. But I will be making uh, these blend files available on my Patreon, which you can also check in the description. I really appreciate all of the support and the subscription and all those sort of things. So take care, guys, and look after yourselves. And I'll see you guys next time for another tutorial. Thank <laughs> you.